Hello there guys, welcome to the e-bike repairs YouTube channel. Uh, my name's Dosh and I take apart stuff like this. Um, this is a Van Moof battery pack. It's a VM13-147. Uh, 10 INR19 forward slash 66 dash 4. Rechargeable lithium ion battery pack, 36 volt, 504 watt hours. Nominal capacity 14 amp hours rated. 12.6 amp hours. Uh, it's lots of things, so you don't squish it, smash it, push it, or anything like that. It looks as though it'll be a long, I guess another one. A, well, it's, it's very long. For reference, there's my elbow to my fingertips there, and it's still that much longer. Very long. Um, the customer's sent it down. I've got absolutely no idea if I can fix it, anything like that. He says he's getting no power out of the outputs, so let's have a look and see. Um, on the output side, how am I going to show you this? There you go, you can kind of see. Um, oh, the lighting's not good in this corner. On the output side, you've got, well, I'll show you in a minute. There are some terminals there and they're not getting anything out of it, but we've got one, two, three, four, five Phillips head screws. Because the battery's so long, if I try and do that, you know we're near the top, so yeah. I'll, uh, I'll pop these off and let's have a little look, shall we? Little screws that look like that. So I'll put them up there so I can use them. What do we think? Okay. Oh, yeah, look, and then it pulls out of the case. I don't know if the customer's had this one open already or what, but um, there it is, out of the case. It went that way up, so the side that we're seeing now went to, it's fairly obvious, I think, because it'll only fit one way. Yeah, there's like a shaped profile. I don't think I can get that confused. Um, oh wow, there's like a long BMS. Oh, this will be fun. This is going to be so much fun. Right. <clears throat> it looks as though there's a main... These are the terminals I was on about. There's a main positive and negative out. There's a little positive and negative, which I can only assume be the charge port wires. The thin ones. And then you've got a whole bloody load of like sense wires up here, which is the problem. They're the problem. So I basically, I need to get the original BMS. I need to see if the original BMS can function, because if it doesn't, it's not good. All right. Got discharge negative, discharge positive. Let's see. Uh, discharge negative, discharge positive. There. Not enough volts. So it's unhappy for some reason. Okay. Uh, we've got our charge positive and charge negative. Something's confused. Yep, it doesn't like that. Okay, we've got our battery positive, and where's our battery negative? One's up this end, so the other one probably there. There and there. 41 volts pointing to a BMS problem. Oh no, because I bet I can't get one of these. Bet I can't get one. Um, right, okay then. 
I suppose we need to see cell voltages or something like that. So where are they? Where are they? Let's have this whole thing apart, shall we? Let's have a look. That's one of those. A little bit of that. Got the bones there. Get off. This looks like balance wires underneath here. There we go. Balance wires. Okay, that's quite the uh, quite the PCB there. Let's see if I can zoom you into the you know something we care about. Oh no, that's horrible quality. That's not good. That might be a bit better. Um, right, let's have a look at these sense wires here. How many of those have we got? We got one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> eleven is good, that's how many we want to see. Um, if I can scrape a little bit of this silicon off, we might actually be able to measure the buggers. with our standard size multimeter probes. Oh, I've done something. Back to volts, please. Okay. That's our... God, I don't know where anything is, can't see. So much silicon in the way. 41.02 volts across that lot. We've got... Can't see. It's useless if you can't see, isn't it? Right, there we go. Oh god, this is not easy. Four point one. Four point one. 4.1 4 4.1 4.1 4.1 4.1 you're getting where this is going 4.1 4.1 cells are fine unfortunately ugh, a fly go away um, can be a bit of a difficult one. So on this board, we don't have anything like a reset button. No. See, we've got key in RX, TX, ground, DT, whatever that is, fault and test, for these uh, wires that come out to this connector, which is on the bike side. Unfortunately, don't have the bike. 
Let's come formal coating over everything and look and see if anything seems unhappy, damaged, broken, burnt. Ugh. Ooh, focus. Now everything looks quite happy to be honest. Let's just conform a coating. Bugger. You could replace this probably with a generic BMS if you can find one small enough to fit, but these sense wires are the problem. I, I, it's very hard to know what to do about that. Um, very hard to know. My only thought might be I'll try completely down powering it. So disconnect the balance wires. I will remove the main positive. Can't see. I'll remove the main positive from the board so that there's only the negative connector, which then you know can't have any power. Um, power it back up and see if that perhaps resets it. But there are no you know, there's no button. As far as I'm aware, not a lot that one can do about this issue, apart from replace the BMS. Now, don't think you can get a new BMS. I think that's going to be a bit of a bit of a problem. Uh, so I will remove this uh, positive terminal here. Let me zoom out a bit. No. There you go. That'll do. I'll remove this positive terminal here and we'll, we'll have a look, shall we? We'll have a look. You never know, it might just be fixable. It'd be great if it was, wouldn't it? I should have used the bigger soldering iron, shouldn't I? There it goes. Ooh, don't short out on anything we don't want you to short out on. There is a little code here. So you never know, it might be all right. Um, right, so that's that positive disconnected. The balance wires here are disconnected. Um, I might need to short out the outputs or something just to uh, you know, make sure there's really no power in the board. Because we're getting millivolts. Um, which would just be a, a bit of wire between probably the Discharge port there and the discharge negative there. Yeah, so that one and that one. All my pliers. So nothing's connected because otherwise I'll. Uh... Blow my little fingies up. What are we reading now? Bugger all, really. Millivolts. Really, not a lot. Yeah, that should be down powered now. So, hopefully, keep the balance wires back up. Like that. Resold the main positive. No horrible sparks, that's good. That 
will do for the sake of testing it. Now, on the outputs, discharge, discharge. Ah, uh, not a lot of goodness happening. Um, the other thing I'll try is applying charging voltage to the uh, to the charge port terminals, which are directly on the board here. So we've got our charge positive. It's this little red one here. Ugh. Which is impossible to clip onto, of course. Like that. Hmm. It's delightfully disinterested, isn't it? Let's go to the battery. Yeah, it will charge direct to the battery. It will charge across the negative side. So discharge wires. It will charge across the negative side of the um, charge wire, it won't charge across the positive side, which means this is probably off. All these are off. Uh, that's our charge negative. No interest to there. No interest to there. But it will go if you go directly to the main positive terminal. So what's happening is for some reason the BMS has decided it's unhappy. doesn't want to take a charge from there. <sighs> Unfortunately, I think uh, short of sourcing a replacement BMS, I'm, uh, I'm a bit limited in what I can do here. Something is bad. Sort of this end. Well, between here and here, there's no continuity, which on sort of a happy BMS that, you know, maybe the BMS is detecting a problem or what, something, but uh, on a happy one, that path there would be continuous. But it's not, you know, no beeps. I believe the part that bridges it is uh, is this doobra here. However, I've got no idea what that is. Couldn't tell you. There is some writing on it actually. Is that a fuse? Of 
It's hard to see what that says, isn't it? One get a light on that or something. Uh, maybe you can see what it says for me. How much can I zoom you in? No, you can't see. That's a bugger. I wonder if that's what's blown. If it's a fuse, could just be that. But is it a fuse? I don't know. Um, <coughs> it clearly bridges. There, this is the positive side of the PCB. You can see the break in the the uh, copper sheet here. Clearly bridges it, but I don't. Oh, I'll check it out. Okay, I have news. That is a fuse. Huh, that rhymes. Um, I'll try and put something in the description or on the screen or something. That's a fuse. Now, meter in continuity mode. That fuse done beep. So the fuse is blown. Now, the reason the fuse has for being blown, I do not know. But, what I can do is to quickly test it is bypass the fuse. Have a look, see if the battery then charges and discharges. Source the appropriate fuse. It's not, you know, rocket science to uh, remove and resolder that bad boy. And then you never know, we might be off to the races with a working battery again. Could be a common problem that loads of people have. I don't know. If I just tin up, I'll just use this tiny, tiny, tiny link of wire, which is, you know, like, barely anything. So if anything does short out, it's already broken, mind. Um, if anything does go horrifically wrong, <coughs> all it's going to do is vaporise this piece of wire in my hand and burn my fingers. Tin that. Probably a bit big iron for this, but oh well. Okay, there's a bit on that side. Ugh. I can't see because it's around the other side of the chip. Bear with me. Right, I have just desoldered that from the board. Uh, these are, there's one terminal here, one terminal here, one terminal here. That's the inside of the fuse, that's what it looks like. I'm unsure whether or not there are sort of three fuses in there, or what's meant to be in there, but we'll get to that, I suppose. Okay, right, you're zoomed in a little bit now. So we've got, I've tinned one side, the other side, and this third area. And I've just made up my little link wire to, um, I don't know, do something a little bit like that. I'm really bad at small soldering like this, so, you know, this won't be pretty. But for testing purposes, to find out if it is the fuse, you know, if I replace the fuse, will it work? It's, uh, it's worth checking. So there's that section done. And my soldering is way too big for this kind of work. Way too big. It's, uh, I normally don't do board level repairs, but in this case, where it's, you know, it's a fuse. Replacing a fuse is not exactly the end of the world. Um, well, hopefully it'll be right. Right, will it blow? I think I'm getting a tiny spark when I do that. Okay, nothing's blown. Now, do you get power at the discharge positive and the discharge negative? Yeah. 
Eh. Kinda. <clears throat> Kinda. Um. I'll try reapplying my charge. Huh? So we've got our charge negative and our charge positive. And it still doesn't work. Of course it doesn't. Little charge there. He's got no interest in charging there and a blob to load a solder. Not meant to do that. Um Hmm. Oh, it does charge through the discharge port now. Which didn't do before because the fuse was blown, I guess. It's not interested in taking a charge through the charge port though, which is, you know, still not much good. These look common, all these. I think they are. Oh, it charges through the charge port. Would you look at that? It's taking a charge through the charge port. Haha. <laughs> Right, now it's had that kickstart of a charge. We go discharge negative. You can't even see me multimeter, can you? I'm just playing alone now. Right, how's that? Discharge negative to discharge. Uh, that's charge, sorry. Discharge negative to discharge positive ah nothing 2.5 volts I just got you to take a charge filthy evil Charge negative to charge positive takes a charge. Yep, it doesn't like it being at 5 amps. Let me turn that down a bit. It uh, is only happy with it up to about 2.3 amps. Okay, yeah, that's charging now. So. Let's have a look. The upper two are the power terminals and the negative is on this side. Any sharpies? So this one's negative here, this one's positive here. Discharge and discharge on the bottom. The positive charge they reversed, so this is negative charge and this is positive charge up there like that. So out of the big four pins, charge negative, charge positive, discharge negative, discharge positive, they sort of swap the sides. Yeah. Right. MJ1 cells, by the way, for anybody concerned. LG cells, great cells alike, and we are friends. Right, discharge negative, discharge positive, gives us no volts. No. 
no volts on the output, but is this one of those batteries that only works when it's connected to the bike? I don't know. I don't know. It's charging now though, with that, uh, that fuse linked out. Charge port. Let's do charge. Negative. Charge. Positive. does indeed charge through the ports on the end of the battery there, which is great. If you look at the voltage across the whole lot, find a way to do this that you can see, okay, 41.13 volts. Okay. Turn the charger up to two amps. There you go, clearly charging. Perhaps it only outputs power when it's connected to the bike, I'm not sure. It's less broken than it was. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you like this kind of thing, you can like, share, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, I've got members thing where you kind of just sort of... Uh, you get to watch members exclusive videos, of which there aren't that many of. And, um, yeah. It's all, all good fun. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, I've got this Van Moof long battery jobby. This is the fuse. I did get it to charge last time, which is great news. Um, well, this is where, where the fuse was. This is not the fuse. This is a random link of wire I put on because I didn't have any other options at the time. So that's coming off. The customer is very happy to try this. He says, better than a completely dead battery. And I got in, whee, there you go, SFK1445. These teeny tiny, teeny tiny little fuses. There you go, you can read the numbers there. Um, should be, well, as far as I can tell, the same specs. It's the closest thing I could find. I um, also don't know how to open one of these. Little surface mount component debris. It's kind of open. Aha, there we are. I'm going to buy a little piece of film. Uh, so, what I'll do, do I need to pre-tin these? Who could say? But there are two sides to it and a third little contact there which sits on it that way around, like that. Um, I'm not very good at little tiny, tiny micro soldering things so let's just pretend that it's fine. That's a little bit of flux going on the board because, as far as I know, that's the right way to do that. And I'll get the hot air going. Uh, the hot air is turned up a long way. I don't know if it should be or not, but it is. Maybe I'll. Turn the speed down. Just get all this cooking nicely. 
there are lots of videos on uh, micro soldering. Oh, it's barely even micro soldering, you know, this is actually quite a large thing. And it's going up turn to that. But there are lots of videos on this sort of thing. Um, you obviously should never do it with the battery connected. You should take it all off. Heat near batteries is bad. Don't do it, don't be dumb. This is more of a, a sort of a Hail Mary. I think part of what's going on here is that we need to heat up these huge, huge copper uh, pieces on each side because this is almost all one large sort of copper bit here. The top of the fuse will immediately melt. Right. Right, that may not be mine or anybody else's finest work. I can totally go back and re-solder that. Um, hmm. I'm fairly confident that's actually made a good connection, but we, we don't know yet. Um, so, you get anything a bit like a little bit of power out of this board now. That's the battery in on the positive. That's the battery in on the negative, and we're getting 41.95 volts because I fully charged it in the past. Discharge positive. Hmm. We're getting, we're getting a, a dropping voltage. Doesn't really inspire much confidence, does it? Bugger. Do we have continuity across the fuse, or did I just blow it? No. We do, so it's a little bit hard to know.
Mm. Who could say? Who could say? I guess we'll have to give it back to the customer and see.